Now, I want you to know something, okay? We've been talking about this Biden immigration bill. It's the U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021. And we didn't really know what was going to be in it. And I have to say, mm -hmm. what I'm going to tell you right now is not ultimately what the bill is going to be. This okay. is going to be pie in the sky for the Democrats. And we hope most of it can pass. We don't know everything. But this is a bill that was introduced by Joe Biden into Congress today. Around 4, 4.30 this afternoon, we started noticing on the internet the actual bill. You can look it up now. You can Google it. You can read the bill. It's 365 pages long. I had one hour to read the entire bill, all right? Because I, oh, wow. I found it on the internet around 4.30, 4.40. So I read through the whole entire thing because I said the squad's going to want to know. All okay. right, so I read through it fast. I'm going to tell you everything I learned from reading through it. So please strap yourself in. There's a lot to know. And this is the thing from the political point of view. Why everybody's excited? Because every year they submit immigration bills and they go nowhere. And there's not been an immigration amnesty since 1986. So we are now going on almost 40 years Huge. without an amnesty. The last major change in immigration that actually benefited immigrants was right before 9-11. So we're now 23, 24 years in from an immigration law change that actually benefited somebody. So, and every year that they wanted to do something, it was always blocked by Republicans and immigration restrictionists. This is the first time in my adult life that the Democrats who have always wanted to overhaul the immigration laws have controlled the presidency, the Senate, and the House of Representatives. This is why people are so excited. Now, okay. Nancy Pelosi, needs to carry every Democrat in the House of Representatives. They only hold five votes more than the Republicans. So they got to carry almost every Democrat in the House. And in the Senate, you need 60 votes to pass a bill. The Democrats only have 51. But there's some uh -huh. parliamentary maneuvers that they can pass a bill through what's called reconciliation if they really want to do it, you know, on party lines. But you're going to need some Republicans to come over if you're going to want to pass most or all of this. This is why this is pie in the sky. We hope most of it will pass. Now, one thing you're going to start hearing a lot about this term, Yo-Yo and Vanessa. It's a new immigration mm -hmm. term. We're going to start hearing about it every day. There is lawful resident status. Those are people with green cards. There is conditional resident status. We've heard those terms before. Those are people who get green cards and are only married for two years to their spouse. You're also a conditional resident if you're an entrepreneur and invest a million dollars in a U.S. business. There is now <clears throat> going to be a new status, and that new status is going to be called the lawful prospective immigration status. And we're going to have more people in that status than uh, most than conditional resident status, that is for sure, because it is the lawful, pros, pro, lawful prospective immigrant status that most people are going to get if this amnesty passes. Let's go through it one by one. If you are physically here out of status on January 1st, 2001, this is the exact law that was submitted to the Senate and the House of Representatives, and you are able to pass a background check. And we're gonna talk about what that background check is going to entail. And if you're able to do that, you will get employment authorized immediately. You will get travel authorization immediately. So you will be able to travel home. You will be able to travel back no matter how you came to America. You will be able to get a social security number, a driver's license. You will be able to get health insurance or apply on the Obamacare exchange. You will be legal in a lawful prospective immigrant status. You will also not be subject to deportation. As a matter of fact, anyone who makes an application while it's pending 
would not be subject to deportation. And if you get granted this lawful prospective immigrant status, you, it will be good for up to six years. Between years number five and six, you must file a new application. They're going to give you 365 days between years five and six to apply from lawful prospective immigrant status, which basically is lawful resident status, except it ends in six years. So it ends. So you then have to make a new application for lawful resident status. And as long as you remained in the United States for up to 180 days each year over those five years in lawful prospective immigrant status, and you don't have a criminal record that would bar you from adjusting your status, you would then be able to adjust your status to a green card holder. Now, at that point, you may say, I'm done. I don't need to do anything else. And you don't have to. You have a green card for life. You're done with immigration unless you want to become a U.S. citizen. If you want to become a U.S. citizen three years after you adjust your status from lawful prospective immigrant status to lawful resident status, you can become a United States citizen. Now, one of the other things that was big in the bill is that in order to go from lawful prospective immigrant status to lawful resident status, you got to pay all your taxes. So if you're not going to pay taxes or you're going to work off the books, you will ultimately get screwed in the end because your lawful prospective immigrant status will end at six years and then you won't be able to get a green card and you'll be out of status again. Now, here is something that we never discussed before. If you were deported from the United States, you still may be eligible for the amnesty. If you were deported after January 20th, 2017, and were physically present in the United States for three years before that, meaning if you were deported after January 20th, 2017, and you were in the U.S. for three years before you got ordered deported, and you were not deported because of an aggravated felony, you may have the right to apply for the amnesty from abroad, from your country of where you are right now. And if you need a waiver for criminal offense, which would be a minor criminal offense, not an aggravated felony, you can get one based on humanitarian concerns and then if that is the case, you can then return to the United States. You would return to the United States in lawful prospective immigrant status, have to wait five years, show you paid your taxes, showed you did not have any other criminal offense, and then adjust your status to a lawful resident. So in essence, what they're doing is they're saying, all of the people who got ordered deported during the Trump administration, because what is January 20th, 2017? That's when Trump became president. So basically, if Trump deported you, all the Trump deportees, or many of them, not all of them, those with heavy criminal records won't be able to return, but those right. who got deported just for being out of status. We saw our military right. veterans right. or the wife of the military veteran who we had on. Those right. people would be able to come back. We're gonna call them the Trump deportees. They will be able oh, wow. to come back under oh, wow. this lawful prospective immigrant status. That is for everybody who has been out of status in the United States as of January 1st, 2021. We did read in the news that they're gonna require you to be in the United States for four years before January 1st, 2021. I have to be honest with you, I was racing through this law, so I didn't read every last word. I was skipping paragraphs. I didn't see it there. Right. I'm sure it's there. All right? right. So I'm going to go based on what I saw in the news, although I didn't actually read it. I will know a lot more on Monday. Based on the news, they said you had to be physically here for four years before the passage as well. Okay. That is going to be the new amnesty. Now, 
for DACA recipients. If you are a member of DACA, you were a member of DACA, but you didn't renew your DACA. As long as you were in the DACA program at one point in time, you will be immediately eligible to adjust your status, provided you're able to prove you did two years of college, two years in the military, you have an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and you graduated from high school. You will be eligible to adjust immediately. So all the DACA recipients, there's no waiting. You just go straight for a green card. Every other person who came to the United States and was under the age of 18 on January 1st, 2021, will be eligible for also lawful prospective immigrant status. The difference is that you don't have to show you were here for four years earlier. And as soon as you earned a two years associate's degree, a four years bachelor's degree, or two years in the military, or maybe you already have it, you would then go from lawful prospective immigrant status. You don't have to wait that five years and you can apply for your adjustment of status immediately. So uh -huh. it is an immediate amnesty for anybody who is in the DACA program. And it is a potential immediate amnesty for anyone who came here under the age of 18. And in the news, they were talking about 17, but it's under the age of 18. And you have to have obviously got an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. After three years of lawful resident status in the amnesty program, in adjusting through DACA or the DREAM Act, you can apply for your citizenship if you choose to. If you are a member of TPS and you were in the United States as of January 1st, 2017, whether or not you ultimately renewed your TPS or not, because there's lots of people who had TPS, temporary protected status, and then they let it lapse. Those people in TPS, temporary protected status, they were here on January 1st, 2017, including their spouses and children, are eligible to adjust their status immediately to that of a green card holder, and then three years later apply for citizenship. You only need one member of the family, the husband or the wife, to have been in TPS, and then the spouse can come along, as well as all of the children under 21. I have Kamar Joseph in the comments saying the Republicans are going to tear up this bill. Hopefully the Democrats fight with all their might. Well, let me say this. If the Democrats want to, they have the numbers to pass this exactly as it is without any Republican support, provided all of the Democrats are in favor of this because they can do it through something called reconciliation. They have a majority in the House. They have a one seat majority in the Senate and they have the presidency. So they can do it without Republican support. The key thing will be, will all the Democrats join along? There's some Democrats who may not like all of this. If you are an agricultural worker and you worked on a farm for 400 days in the last five years, or 2,300 hours in the last five years, you can adjust your status immediately to get a green card. Yes, Yo-Yo. These aren't actual social media questions. It's just off what you're talking. Yeah. Sherma yeah. is asking, what if you came at 19 years old? If you came at 19, you would fall under the new amnesty as long as you were here before January 1st, 2021, and you were here illegally on January 21st, 2021, illegally, we, I don't even want to use that word anymore. You were undocumented. They're not supposed to use that word anymore. All right. right we were even right. talking about it yesterday. And I even said yesterday, I sometimes catch myself saying it. Because you see so, it so yeah, much, you read it. That's so right. Much, so yeah. So yeah, you would fall under the regular amnesty. You wouldn't fall under the DREAM Act amnesty. There's actually four different amnesty programs. There is the regular amnesty, which we just talked about the amnesty for the people who are in DACA, the amnesty for children who came here under the age of 18, who were not part of DACA, 
because maybe you never applied or maybe you were too old. There's people I speak to are 40, 50 years old who came here as kids. They were too old for DACA, but they would be eligible for this DREAM Act amnesty. There's actually five. I just actually realized it's five. It's not even four. There's the TPS amnesty, the Temporary Protected Status Amnesty, and the Agricultural Worker Amnesty. Five different amnesty programs. Now, who is not eligible? We're just going to talk. There's a lot of different people who may not be eligible. The key, the key one is people who have criminal convictions. Mm-hmm. If you have an agri- if you have a felony conviction, you are not eligible for any of these amnesty programs. If you have more than three misdemeanors, you are not eligible. You can have two misdemeanors, but not three. You are not eligible for this amnesty program. Despite all of this, there are waivers for everybody, including felons. So there would be a waiver, not to say the waiver would be approved, but there is waivers if you can show that you are rehabilitated. Perhaps you committed this felony 35 years ago. You can show rehabilitation and a clean record for a very long period of time. And you can show hardship to yourself and your family. They would give you a waiver, even as a felon, or with more than three misdemeanors. If you had a felony in, you know, six months ago, I don't think you're going to be able to show rehabilitation. So that rehabilitation component is for people who committed crimes a long time ago. Now, the question everyone's going to be asking is, how do I prove all of this? How do I prove I was here? The law gives a list of documents. This law gives a list of documents that they will accept. I'm going to go through them all. Exactly what they're going to accept to prove you are here under the amnesty. Obviously, passport entry stamps. You have visas. You have stamps in your passport. I-94s, that's going to prove a lot. Any document you have from the Department of Homeland Security with your name and a date on it. Any document you have from USCIS, from ICE, anything that you have from the US government with your name and a date on it will be able to prove something. Any educational records, school records, whether it is your child or you, because if it's your child, the school records would indicate the child's going home to mom or dad. So basically anybody with a child in America who enrolled their kid in public school or private school, doesn't matter. There's going to be school records, who the parents are and where the kid goes home every night. Employment records. And this is really important what I'm going to say about these employment records, because everyone's going to say, my boss isn't going to give me anything. They're terrified. Under this Mm. law, whatever an employer gives you to prove that you were physically here, that you would qualify for the amnesty, that employer does not have any criminal or civil liability that can be put against him. So the employer gets an amnesty as well. The employer's amnesty is cooperate in this amnesty. Your employees will get a green card. Give us these documents, prove your employees were here and you will not be fined. You will not go to jail. So they're encouraging employers to give these documentation to prove that people were working rather than fear that if they give this document that the employer may get in trouble. Right. Military records they're going to use if you were in the military. Church records. And it's not going to be church records that there's a list of you on a church registry and it's not going to be in letter from your pastor. But if you have records that you participated in some form of religious ceremony, in a church, in a temple, in a synagogue, wherever you go and whatever your religion is, they will use those records as well to prove you were here. Rental receipts, purchases of homes, insurance receipts, taxes, Western Union and remittances back home. So if you have evidence that you made payments through Western Union, or I don't know, whatever the other ones are, PayPal, or I don't know, whatever it is. But if you have remittances back home, make sure you save those receipts. Travel records. If you flew by on an airplane, you bought a train ticket, a bus ticket, save them. That will be proof under the law 
that you were physically here. Bank transactions. I think I said that, but if I didn't, any bank transaction will prove you are here. And worse comes to worse, an extraordinarily detailed affidavit from two people confirming your presence in America. So every person should be able, if they were here on January 1st, 2021, should be able to prove that they were here one way or the other. As I said earlier, as soon as your application goes into immigration, ICE can't touch you. You cannot be deported while immigration is making a decision on any one of these five amnesty applications. The most important thing you got to remember, even though you're going to get travel permission, is you can't stay out of the country more than 180 days in any calendar year. But there's going to be more than just the amnesty, Yo-Yo and Vanessa. Back in 2001, when I said the last time they made any law that benefited immigrants, they came up with a new visa. It was called the V visa. And it allowed people who were spouses and children of permanent residents who had pending cases to come live in the United States and wait out their immigration case here in America. The V visa expired. Nobody can do it anymore. They're bringing it back. And what they're doing is anybody who has filed for their adult children, whether you're a resident or a U.S. citizen, we've been talking about this for a while, married adult children, 15, 17 year wait, your adult child of a permanent resident, seven, eight, nine year wait. Adult child, single of a U.S. citizen, seven, eight, nine year wait for a green card. In some countries, it's 20, 30 years. Mexico, Philippines, long, long waits. Yes, I remember. Everybody on the visa waiting list with an approved I-130, if you were filed for by your parent and you're an adult child, will be eligible for a V visa, V as in victory. What that is, it is a temporary visa to come to the United States it gives you work permission, it gives you travel permission, and allows you to live in the United States waiting out your green card. That is not for people in the future who file, that's for people who file, that's why I kept telling everybody in the last couple of weeks, put something in, file. Right. You're gonna be in a lot better shape. And here, I'm right again. I hate to say it. I don't wanna be a bragger, but I'm right again. Because if you file for your kids, and you get your case approved before this law gets passed, they'll still be on a waiting list, but their waiting list is gonna be here in America with you legally working and being able to travel. One of the things we always talk about on our show is the difference between expungement and vacators. <laughs> vacators, if you remember Yo-Yo and Vanessa, vacators are, my conviction was illegal. You violated my rights and this conviction should be wiped off the books because my rights were violated. Mm -hmm. And we said that is the only way to overcome a conviction that bars you from immigration benefits. An expungement under the law currently means you are convicted and then you made an application to a state or federal authority to say, I complied with all the requirements. I would like you to wipe this conviction off my record. But under the Immigration and Nationality Act, it's still a conviction. You pled guilty or you were found guilty and you did a sentence. End of story. That expungement doesn't wipe away the immigration consequences. Now under the U.S. Citizenship Act of 2021, they will accept an expungement to wipe away the consequences for immigration. So it is very possible that you pled guilty or found guilty and you could expunge your conviction Wow. You no longer have that conviction for immigration purposes. There are so yeah. many people I can't even begin to tell you who have called our show and said, I got an expungement. I'm like, no, nah, sorry, that don't work. You got to vacate it. I've said that like a million times. Yeah. Now they're going to allow expungements as well. Right now yeah. to get a waiver, if you have consequences, misrepresentation, you've lied to the government, you have a criminal record, 
There's all sorts of reasons why you would be denied a green card. Basically, right now, to do a 601 waiver, you need to show extreme and unusual hardship to a spouse or a parent, period. You don't have a spouse or a parent, you can't get a waiver, you're screwed. They are now changing the waiver laws. The waiver laws will be based on humanitarian reasons. So you can get a waiver no matter what your issue is if you can show humanitarian purposes on why you would need a waiver or to ensure family unity or if you can show it's in the public interest. They are going to look at in waivers moving forward instead of extreme and unusual hardship, the severity of your underlying offense that prevents you from coming to America, your duration of residence in the United States of America, your evidence of rehabilitation, meaning the longer the conviction happened and you don't show that you did it again, that would show rehabilitation. Old convictions and clean record shows rehabilitation. And of course, the effect on your family. Three and a half million people or more, I think it's 3.8 million people, Yo-Yo and Vanessa, are right now on a visa waiting list for a green card. The waiting lists for employment from India, they say is 80, 90, 100 years. People are gonna die before they get their green cards. Some other ones are 20, 30 years. Every year they give out hundreds and hundreds of thousands of green cards and 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 green cards go unused every year. For every unused green card that was not given out between 1992 and the year 2000, and they estimate that that's gonna be over a million green cards, they're gonna put back and try to wipe away this backlog of people who have been waiting 20, 30 years or even five, seven, eight years. So the backlogs, because they're gonna use these unused visas, unused green cards between 1992 and 2000, they're gonna wipe away a lot of the backlog on these cases where employment-based and family-based cases. Now, one thing they're also going to do is they're going to make spouses and children under 21 immediate relatives. What does that mean? If you're in the F2A category, you're no longer on a waiting list. If you're in the F2A category, you're eligible to adjust your status here in the United States if you're married to a resident or you're a child of a resident, even if you overstayed on your visa. They will be in the same position, spouses and children of permanent residents will be put in the same position as spouses and children of US citizens. They're also going to eliminate the per country limits so in other words, if you look at the visa waiting list, there's the world, there's India, there's China, there's Philippines, there's Mexico, because they limit the number of people that comes from any particular country. And it has led to a perverse, huge weight from these countries, India and the Philippines especially, where the weights are, for some categories, over 20, 30 years long. I've read 100 year for employment-based cases from India. So the per country limits are now going to be eliminated. It's just gonna be one worldwide immigration limit. We talk about provisional waivers, Yo-Yo and Vanessa. You gotta get a provisional waiver. If you're not eligible to adjust your status here, you gotta go home. If you don't get the provisional waiver, you'll get stuck for 10 years, the three and 10 year bar. What that did was force people who overstayed their visa to never leave America. Because if they left, you would never be able to come back. They are eliminating the three and 10 year bars. So if you overstay your visa, you would be able to go home without having to go through the process of doing a provisional waiver to get your green card and come back. They're also going to have people retain priority dates where children aged out. We talk about that a lot. When children age yeah. out of cases and we say, sorry, your children aged out, you gotta refile for them and then wait another seven, eight, nine years. Now, if your child ages out and you refile for your child after you get a green card, your child will be put on the waiting list in the same priority date in which your original application was done. So for example, let's say your mother files for you. And at that time, your mother filed for you in 2015. And when you're eligible for your green card in 2021, 
I'm making this up. Your child turned 22, no longer on the case, off the case. You come up, you and your child are now separated. You're a permanent resident. You now have to file back for your child. That child waits another seven, eight, nine years because the priority date resets when you refile for them. Now under this law, when you refile for your child, you're gonna be able to maintain that 2015 priority date, presumably making your child be able to be reunited with you much quicker. They're going to make the definition of a stepchild. Anybody who is under the age of 21 when your parent marries another one. We've talked about that a lot too. When somebody gets married to a U.S. citizen and the U.S. citizen wants to file for the foreign spouse's children, you had to get married before the child turned 18 or you can't file for that child. So now they're moving it to 21. So as long as the marriage happens before the 21st birthday, your step parent will be able to file for you. There's a diversity visa lottery that diversifies where people come from, where people from countries that have lower immigration come from, mostly Africa, some Asian countries, some Eastern European countries. They give 55,000 green cards out to diversity visa lottery winners that is going to be raised to 80,000 people. Wow. If we were talking about, especially for Indians, where we said employment based, some cases the people are going to be on a waiting list for 80, 90 years. If you have a priority date that is more than 10 years old, meaning that your job sponsorship has taken more than 10 years and you still don't have a green card, no matter what your date on the priority list is, you will be eligible to adjust your status and get a green card immediately. We talk about dual intent or non-immigrant intent. And we talk about that, especially when we say, don't get married in the first 90 days you come here because then you've shown and made a misrepresentation. Right. And because you can't say I'm coming to visit or I'm coming to school and then turn around to get married in three days later because then you've lied to the government. Not for visitors' visas, but for students, they're getting rid of that. So you can now be a student and have a dual intent, an intent to come here temporarily and an intent to stay here permanently, which would mean that you can enter as a student and get married the next day because you have a dual intent. There's also a one-year deadline to file for asylum. If you don't file for asylum within one year, or unless there's changed country circumstances, you can never file for asylum for the history of your life. Too bad, go home and get killed. Yeah, there's a one-year bar on filing for asylum. You got to file within one year of coming here or forget it. Oh, from coming here. From oh, coming yeah. to America. Okay. That one-year deadline is going to be eliminated. You can file what? for asylum whenever you want to if your life is in danger, if you have to go home and you're in a protected group. They're also going to triple the number of asylum officers, maybe quadruple them. They're going to eliminate the entire backlog. We talk about it all the time. My asylum case has been pending for 10, 7, 8, 9 years. When are they going to call me? There's just so many cases. It's just such a common topic. And even going back to what you were saying before, I really identify with the changes in terms of stepchildren because that's a big reason how I became a citizen. So when we have that conversation or when people call in on that, I'm always hoping, you know, for the best for them because that's really the only reason why I'm a citizen was, right. my, you know, my right. remarriage. Was it your mom or your dad married a U.S. citizen? My mom married a U.S. US citizen. citizen. Okay, so now if your mom married uh -huh. right now if your mom marries a u.s is that your family yeah that's my family oh, yeah. so cute if your mom marries uh -huh. a u.s citizen if your mom married your your stepdad and you had turned 18 you were 18 in a month you would you would be in the dr wow right yeah so i was it to 21 then in the yeah. when it happened yeah. so i don't even remember when right. oh, you're a baby but uh, but you know it does affect a lot of a lot of children who are Right at that age, they're not adults, they're not kids, and they get treated as adults. You're over 18, screw you, wow. go home. Yeah. Wow. U visas, there's a 10 year wait on U visas. You know, Donald Trump, he, he, he liked to, I hate to say this name, but he liked to go around and say, the immigrants are coming here and they're killing everybody. Well, you know, he found about five or six immigrants who killed Americans and made a big deal about it. But there's 100,000 or more 
people who are undocumented, who are the serious victims of crimes by Americans on undocumented aliens who are in line for a U visa. Those are victims visas. And that line is 10 years long. They're going to raise that number from 10,000 to 30,000. So we're going to make that line a lot faster. They also did for LGBTQ, meaning that now they're going to define a spouse as a permanent partner. And why is that important? Because, this is huge. because you could be in a partnership with somebody who lives in a country, you can't go to that country and marry them because they don't recognize same-sex marriage. They only recognize traditional marriage. And now how do you get this person here? A fiance visa, perhaps. But what if you're not a citizen? What if you're a resident? You can't do anything. What if you want to come here on a work visa and you want to bring your partner? You can't. Think about all the times when you can't bring your partner because they're not married in that traditional marriage because you come from a country that doesn't recognize it. Right. Now, the government is going to recognize a spouse as a permanent partner. Meaning that if you can show that this person is your permanent partner, no matter what your sexual orientation is, they will be put into the position of a spouse in any type of application. I think that's amazing. They're also going to increase the number of green cards given out to low-skilled workers. It's your housekeepers, your nannies, your caregivers of elderly, and people who are working in meat packing and poultry. That's most of the unskilled worker category. That is going to go up from 10,000 to 40,000. Americans need those workers. And finally, the last thing I saw was science, technology, engineering, and math majors on student visas. There's going to be no waiting list for them to get green cards if they want to stay in America. So our foreign students who are studying in science, technology, engineering, and math, if you have an employer who's willing to sponsor you, you'll be immediately eligible for your green card. All of this will not pass, okay? All of this will not pass. And there's other things in there that I probably skipped over, which I'll talk more about on Monday. So all of this will not pass unless the Democrats all agree. If all of, and I can't imagine every Democrat agreeing to everything in this bill. And I think in the end, what's going to happen is they're going to do this through something called reconciliation. The Republicans are not going to join on this. If they join, they'll just join on the DREAM Act, but nothing else. And it's going to be pared down a little bit to get all the Democrats to agree. I think what I said, you're going to see 75, 80% of it. It's my opinion. Not 100%, but 75, but 75, 80%, I think you're going to see. The other thing is this. When is this all going to happen? When do no. I get a, something in my hand? This is all great. Fantastic. Right. When do I get something in my hand? Whenever this bill passes, the government has to write a regulation to tell USCIS how to manage these programs. You know, they pass a law that says, if you're part of DACA, you can adjust your status. Well, that's great. What is the procedure that the government is going to want someone to go through? It's called the regulation. What's the form? What do we have to put in the form? All of that's in the regulation. So after the bill passes, they have to do a regulation. For the amnesty portions, the bill says the government must complete regulations within 180 days, meaning the Department of Homeland Security must complete regulations within 180 days of passing the bill. What does that mean? That means let's assume this bill passes in the spring or summer. Then it's going to be another 180 days before this program goes into being. So for the year 2021, don't expect to be filing for amnesty till at least the end of the year, mm. because it's going to be 180 days after the bill passes before immigration is going to start accepting applications. A woman has been sentenced in New Zealand after being caught trying to smuggle nearly 1,000 cacti and succulents strapped to her body. 
One King Lee, known as Wendy, pleaded guilty to at the Manu Kao District Court of charges under two separate violations of biosecurity laws. In March 2019, the 38-year-old who lives in Auckland attempted to smuggle 947 succulents <laughs> and cacti by putting them inside her... That's got to hurt. By putting them inside yeah. her stockings. The plants were worth what? over $10,000. They were endangered and threatened species. It had high commercial value. Simon Anderson, an investigations oh. manager at the Ministry for Primary Industries, said the sentencing was a good reminder that anyone who smuggles plants or other endangered species into New Zealand can expect to be prosecuted. How do you put 100 cactuses in your stockings? How's that real? even possible? I want to see what her legs look yeah. like. How'd she sit on the plane? Maybe she didn't stuff it all the way to the seating part. I don't know. Well, we're going from New Zealand straight to Australia, where apparently a woman in Australia has been sharing her home with a giant spider for the past year. Yep, Annette Gray has named oh, her unexpected no. guest Charlotte, from Charlotte's Web, obviously. And it's a giant spider that wandered in one day and decided to stay. According to Gray's son, Jake, Charlotte is a huntsman spider, a species that can grow quite large, but is actually pretty friendly. When left alone, huntsman spiders pose no threat to people, and that's the approach Jake's mom's taken towards Charlotte. What the heck is right? Oh, oh, ah, that ah. is gross. Oh, oh. What? That's crazy. I'm saying, Mom, I'm moving out. I don't live with spiders. What? Would you kill the spider, Yo-Yo? No, no, no. Like, what? That's. Would you kill it? Or would you, like, take a paper and kind of, like, shoo it out the back door? No, I, no. I, 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 no. You're shooing out the back door. <laughs> You're going to shoo out no, the back I'm door. Calling some, I'm calling some. I'm calling the super. Like, they got to, like, vacuum it or No, something. no, there's no super. This person lives in a house, Yo-Yo. This is not New York City. There's no superintendent. <laughs> Calling they got a face. vacuum. Dog, look at that. <laughs> oh, man. That thing. Woof. We're going to go now to Saudi Arabia. A roller coaster currently under development in the Middle East is set to smash the existing speed records. It's called Falcon's Flight. And the ride will be the main attraction of Six Flags at Kadia due to open in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh in 2023. According to a press release, the Kiata Investment Company, which is partnered with U.S. Six Flags Entertainment Company, the roller coaster is going to travel two and a half miles, and it is going to go to a speed of 155 miles an hour down a 525 foot or 160 meter deep valley. No, thank you. Where'd you say? Where'd you say this was at? In Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. I say no, thank you. I say absolutely. I say no thank you to the 155 mile an hour, 160 meter drop roller coaster. I'm wow. here for it. I love roller coasters. You love roller coasters. I love roller coasters too, but I did that steep one in, in uh, Six Flags once. This sounds crazier than that one. Yeah. You know what? I when I took my kids to Disney World and I, to I was told the ones at Disney World aren't even like that scary. And I'm like, that was enough no. for me. You those, know, those when I was when I was on uh, like, the, the the one in the Animal Kingdom, what is it the um, uh, the you know when the 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 the, the uh, manor horn? I don't know what it's called. Yeah, the manor horn. Like you, the 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 big monster comes out at the end. It's a very nice ride. You go up. It's very pretty. They got flowers. Everything's going good. And then all of a sudden, the thing goes crazy. And then as you're shooting down through the mountain, this big monster comes out and goes. Ah! The and I said, the abominable man. soul man, right. I said, after that, I said, that abominable soul man, he was right in my face. He scared the hell out of me. I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna go, to I'm gonna, to I go, where, I'm go, I was like, where's a small world? Can, I, can you please take me to a small <laughs> world, please? Where's the, the teacup? What? I would love to see you on a roller coaster. <laughs> no, that abominable <laughs> snow man scared the hell out of me. And uh, talking about abominable snow man, we're going to head over to Egypt, staying in the Middle East. Archaeologists working at a burial site in Egypt have unearthed ancient mummies with golden tongues. The team, headed by Kathleen Martinez of the University of Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, uh, were working at the Manga Temple in Western Alexandria, Egypt, when they discovered 16 burial shafts dating from the Greek and Roman eras. A number of the mummies in a poor state of preservation were found inside the shafts. According to the Facebook post, the archaeologists discovered remnants of gilded Cardinage, a case made of tightly fitting layers of linen or papyrus glued together, the ministry said, as well as amulets of gold foil in the form of a tongue that were placed in the mouth of the mummy. 
I wonder mm. why they did gold tongues. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.